Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check a new 4-in-1 ESC and an F4 flight controller from Spedix. In this video I'm going to go over the board's features and in the next few days I'm going to use them in a build video where I'm going to build and fly the Catalyst Machine Walk Regent Runner. So first of all let's start with the 4-in-1 ESC. Inside its box along with the 4-in-1 ESC You'll get in a high quality XT60 connector with 10 cm long 14 AWG battery leads, a 35 volts 470 microfarad capacitor, two 10 pins connectors for connecting the 4 in 1 ESC and your flight controller. The first one has exposed wires on its ends, so you can simply solder the wires to your flight controller. The second one comes with these ends, so you can simply use the included connectors in order to connect it to your flight controller. In addition, inside this bag, you can find double-sided stickers and these plastic parts, and their purpose is to secure the motor wires to the arms of the quadcopter. Finally, on the bottom of the box, you can find this card that contains the specifications of the 4-in-1 ESC and the wiring diagram. So first of all, the two right pins are grounds. Then we can find the battery plus, plus 10 volts, so this 4-in-1 ESC has a built-in BEC. And there is a warning over here that you shouldn't power the flight controller with the 10 volts and plus plus because otherwise you might damage the ESC. So only use it if you want to power an external accessory such as a VTX or a camera. Then the next pin is the ESC4, then 3, 2 and 1, current sensor and telemetry port. The GS45 is a 45 ampere 4-in-1 bl 32 ESC. It supports lapper batteries between 3 to 6 cells and it can support a peak current of 55 amperes for 10 seconds. The weight of the GS45 is 17.27 grams, so it's a little bit on the heavy side since it's using a pretty big heatsink. The distance between the mounting holes is 30 millimeters and the silicone dampers are already pre-installed. The outer dimensions of the 4-in-1 ESC are 6.1 by 41.7 by 40.6 millimeters. On the top side of the ESC you can find pretty big pads for the motors and next to them you can find numbers that indicate the motor number. All the parts are pretty far from the mounting holes to make sure that you're not going to damage them and you can also find the pads for the battery both on the top of the 4-in-1 ESC and on the bottom. Moving on to the Spedix F4 flight controller. As far as I know it's going to be available in two versions so you'll be able to get it either with an MPU 6000 gyro chip or with an ICM 2602 gyro chip which is the version that I have. It comes pre-flashed with Beta Flight 4 and it's running Spedix F4 firmware. On the front of the flight controller you can find the pads for the FEV camera including camera control pad. You can choose to power the camera either with the battery voltage or with 5 volts so you need to bridge the center pad either with the battery pad or with the 5 volts to choose which one you want to use. On the right you can find the pads for the VTX including a URT export for using the smart audio feature and you can also choose to power the VTX either with the battery voltage or with 5 volts. So again you need to bridge the center pad either with the battery pad or the 5 volts pad. On the right side of the flight controller you can find plenty of UART ports and you're getting a total of 6 free UART ports which is probably the most I've seen in a flight controller. On the back of the flight controller you can find a 4-in-1 ESC connector and you can also find these pads over here so you have the option either to use this connector or these pads which is a great feature. Next to it you can find the LED and buzzer pads and finally on the left side you can find the boot button which is in the form I like. Now by the way it's nice to find that all the pads that are located on the top of the flight controller are also accessible on the bottom and they're also marked. And you can also find two more pads, which are the ESC5 and ESC6 pads, which you can use for a hexacopter, or if you'd like, you can also remap these pads in order to use them with other accessories. The weight of the F4 flight controller is 6.75 grams, so it's pretty light. The distance between the mounting holes is 30.5 millimeters. You can see that the silicone dumpers are already pre-installed, just like the 4-in-1 ESC. And the outer dimensions are 37.2 by 37.1 by 4.6 millimeters. Inside its box, along with the flight controller, you're getting the user manual and this bag that connects two harnesses for connecting the flight controller and the 4-in-1 ESC and aluminum spacers and nuts. Now, by the way, at the moment of shooting this video, the Spedix GS45A 4-in-1 ESC is already available. However, the flight controller is still not out and I hope it's going to be released soon. 
Overall, both 4-in-1 ESC and the flight controller looks like very high quality components and I'm looking forward to see how they're going to perform when I'm going to build the Catalyst Machine Walk Rage and Droner, which is going to happen probably in the next few days. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about either the flight controller or the 4-in-1 ESC, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.